Uh, now we have about 11 branches and in different areas. And, uh, and last, uh, before, just before Christmas, we have our online shop launched. Just. And uh, I think this is the main thing we want to do is from the very beginning, we only have maybe 10 staff. And uh, we want to um, create opportunities, not only just to expand the business, but uh, at the same time, we can create more opportunities for, for, for people with different abilities. So uh, we still keep, when we grow, we still keep the proportion of a PWD employee um, more than 50%. And now, uh, up till this moment, we have 58 or close to 60%. But we hope we can make it better and better. And uh, especially if we can expand more channels for our cookie products. So you can imagine in, in, the, in the bakery, inside the bakery, we can employ more people uh, with, different, with, with different abilities. So uh, this is uh, the ability, the ability of our, our team members is always the, the core, core theme when we expand, when we develop. So, up to you now, do you have any questions? Because uh, you are not very familiar with iBakery, up to this moment, do you think this model, like uh, very ability-based, this kind of model, this kind of operation can sustain? Remember, we still have to uh, face the same uh, uh, market situation as other, SM, uh, other SMEs. Uh, uh, we, we, we still have to, uh, it's the, the same competitive, uh, uh, all, all the uh, uh, challenges that the other SME has to face, we, we have to face. Can we sustain? Yes. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I think uh, because you are collaborating with normal people and people with disability, so I think the most important the way to sustain the business is you do better uh, quali quali uh, quality control, QC. Because if your product is good, people will come back again. And you don't need to always emphasize yourself as a social entrepreneur. Because if you always emphasize yourself as social entrepreneur, people will just like, oh, I'm doing charity to uh, purchase your products for once only. Mm -hmm. So it is very important for encouraging they come back again. So this is, uh, I think this is the way you can sustain business. Thank you. Thank you for your trust in our products. And uh, actually, uh, we are thinking the same and we always remind ourselves and our colleagues that we must have to deliver the best products and the best service to our customers. Otherwise, they won't come back again. They may buy for good for goodwill one time or two times, but uh, it's, it's difficult to keep them uh, coming back, keep coming back, coming back. So, uh, what, how we can sustain the number one must be we, we have to deliver quality products and service. Even though we have this belief, and even though I think our products is uh, really nice, but in Hong Kong, it's still very difficult because the rent is high and uh, um, you can imagine the, the headcount in our bakery. Can you imagine the headcount in our bakery for a, another bakery with similar sales revenue or similar scale? Do you think our headcount, our expenditure on headcount will be more than them or same? Because we focus on training a lot. So we have to employ more people, actually. And uh, um, uh, it takes time for them to learn. And uh, we, allow them, we uh, allow them to have longer training time and uh, to pick up some skills. And we also have some limitations on, uh, just as I said, I, I really have to select what kind of products I can do. So uh, there are some limitations that an ordinary bakery, they don't have to face. So, how can we still make ourselves sustainable? Uh, collaboration is a way out for us, we find. And uh, on 
on product, uh, uh, and on product uh, uh, R and D because like a bakery similar to our scale, we are very small scale bakery. Uh, we are not made some. We are not the big chain. We don't. We won't have our own R and D team. But in Hong Kong, if we don't have new products, we don't have attractive products, keep going out, going out, going, no one will, will remember us. Even if oh, I have good products, not enough. Because uh, you will buy uh, iBakery cookies for this Christmas. But if they don't have new things, oh, okay, maybe I don't think I will buy iBakery again, even though their cookies are is very, very good, very, very tasteful. So, uh, in this part, we are very lucky that we are connected with uh, the Five Star Hotel in uh, 2013, uh, Hyatt Regency Kyoto. That's why we went there once to learn how to make the matcha cookies. And then one year later, they also taught the, their chef. Also, they, they, actually, their chef came uh, two to three times already to Hong Kong to train our team. And, uh, in Kyoto, I think uh, you are all very familiar. They use matcha in a lot of dessert, and they can use it in very, very good way, very skillful. And they know what kind of matcha is the best for which which kind of matcha is good for which kind of dessert. So we follow their recipes, and even uh, today, like yesterday, we just order matcha from uh, Kyoto, from Hyatt Regency Kyoto, because you know Japanese they don't they don't like to do business with. Um, with foreigners. So even uh, after so many years, we have to order our matcha through the, the hotel. And uh, this product uh, helped us a lot. And uh, it same in, same, uh, in, in 2013, yeah, the same year, actually we got a very good uh, chance, opportunity to open our first pop-up store in uh, well, Sapo, Windsor House a very prime location in Causeway Bay. And uh, so that we think, oh, we must have a very wow product. That's to, so that don't, don't, we don't want to waste the, this good chance. And uh, then we have this. And uh, the ripple effect is the high Regency Hong Kong Sajin also want to uh, work with us after they learn about the matcha cookie stories. And uh, we started collaborate to do new products and pop up stores, and even they consign our products in their cake shops uh, up till now. And we are talking about this year's mooncake actually. And uh, we launched uh, this is the, uh, uh, the product launch about uh, meddling. Uh, we did with the two high agency uh, hotel. And this is the pop-up store. What I um, mentioned uh, when we have a very strong um, production line in Daiwai Bakery, and uh, what we don't have is the channels to sell our products. <coughs> then, how can we open shops? Do we have to open shops, or in in in, in where, in which location? Because um, our cookies is not very, um, it's not very. Economical, I think. It's not. It's not cheap <laughs> in terms of price. I would say it's middle, middle price, middle range price. So it's difficult if we don't sell them in the right place. And finally, we got. Uh, we opened. We got a chance to open pop up store. Pop up store is our uh, another strategy that uh, if we we talk to the the property, we, if we talk to the shopping mall, ah, can you offer a a very special discount on rent for us to 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 operate a shop in your shopping mall? Uh, obviously, they will say no. But if we ask, ah, can we open a try? Ah, maybe we can try to open a pop up pop up store. Because pop-up store sounds like very temporary and short-term, and it's actually easier for us to pitch their support. And uh, it proves this strategy works because after once of all, we have uh, all voicing. And uh, there are some other collaborations with Starbucks. Um, 
want to show you this one. Uh, yeah, and then uh, during the past year, we we have accumulated different experience in 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 different uh, shopping malls, and this is a process that people started to learn, and people started to recognize. Oh, this pop up store, I bakery, I saw it because we we appear in all of this place with this pop up setting. So we want people to remember us. It's kind of marketing and and branding strategy more than uh, 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 sales. Uh, but I, although it, 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 it will help the sales of our products, but uh, we see the impact on marketing and branding more. And some other examples uh, that we work with Circle K, because uh, Circle K, they have more than 300 uh, sales sellers in Hong Kong. Uh, we don't think we have chance to open through. 300 shops in Hong Kong, I bakery. And uh, we are riding on their retail network. We did that uh, two or three times for uh, Mother's Day and also for Christmas. Last year, we worked with haagen and they sell, they put our cookies in their product. And um, it's very encouraging for us. You know haagen um, the ice cream product, uh, an ice cream brand, they have a um, very strict requirement on quality assurance. So if you want to become their supplier, because we supply cookies for them to put on, on the, their product, so we have to go through the same process that other suppliers have to go through, that they will have a QA team to audit our factory and to make sure everything is in order, everything is safe. Then. Uh, that otherwise they won't allow us to, 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 to they, they won't buy cookies from, from our factory. So the process is very good for us. It's a very good learning process that we know the standards. Even though uh, we got ISO 22000 uh, certification, uh, at the very beginning we are very confident. Oh, we got ISO. We are, <laughs> we are very confident. And they are also, oh, okay, you got ISO, that is easier. But even even we we have the ISO, the audit is not easy, and we go through that uh, two or three times, and uh, we learn a lot from them, and eventually our products can appear in that shop, and uh, we became their worldwide supplier. We on their worldwide suppliers list because they have a a, a system, a supplier system for the worldwide hack. Uh, yeah, Ming San Zhong is Hong Kong Parkville. They are a clubhouse in the mid levels. Uh, at the very beginning, they help us to like kind of consign our products, our festive products, and then they help us to sell our products and make it a charity, charity day, and like a charity initiative to to launch in their clubhouse. And after that, the the, the feedback is very good. Actually, uh, we sell very very well and. Um, now they don't do their, they won't make their own cookies in their kitchen. They buy all the cookies from our bakery, including the cookies they use in the FMB service, including uh, like here you can see the photos, um, the the welcoming hamper they send to the, the guest uh, room. So uh, and the, and the little cookies that goes with the coffee and tea. They, 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 they have stopped their cookie production and buy all their cookies from iBakery. And still also uh, selling our cookies, consigning our cookies in their shops. Apart from corporate um, collaborations, we do a lot of uh, volunteer engagement, actually. Um, we have a very, very good team of uh, volunteers. Um, they uh, come very, um, they come regularly and uh, they are very devoted and they will like uh, uh, Tammy, you uh, saw her in the video. Uh, she, come, she comes every week, one day, every week, and if uh, she cannot make it, she will swap the day with another lady volunteer. And uh, because they, they it, it, I don't know, it, it's kind of, it's part of their duty, they make it part of their duty. Instead of just a volunteer work that uh, I, uh, when I have time I come, but not, uh, when I don't have time I don't come. Uh, the quality of our volunteers is not like that. They are very devoted and committed to work, uh, uh, to work with us as a team. 
So apart from uh, Tammy, from volunteers like Tammy, they come to help our operation. We also have uh, some volunteers. Uh, they have the knowledge and wisdom. Uh, they have more knowledge and wisdom on business operation, and uh, we all sit together and and to exchange. Oh, uh, maybe oh, this year we want to uh, boost up our sales, our sales for how many percent? Is this realistic? They will give us a lot of. Uh, ideas and also they will share their network with us and uh, help us to uh, think together how we can go through some bottleneck or uh, to uh, some breakthrough and uh, so we, we, we keep uh, meeting them like uh, once every two months we have a stable group like that ability and then collaboration we want actually, this is the ultimate, the ultimate aim of our bakery is to empower our employees. Through training, through employment, they can, uh, they can, they keep, so that they keep learning, they keep learning and uh, uh, they keep learning every day and they keep um, learning new things every day that's very important and they can contribute. In our place, they contribute because uh, they are also employees. We we have requirements. We they, they also have to fulfill certain requirements. It's not that they just came to spend a day in our bakery. If they cannot perform, I think they, we we also have to supervise them and or else yeah do something that supervisor will do to to enhance their performance. So um, we want them to learn, keep learning, and and also it's very important. We want them to. Yeah, really find something they think, they feel they can contribute. Because like all the colleagues you see in the video, the stories I told you, all of them, they know their position in our bakery and cafe. So every day when they come to work, they know where they have to go, which work position they have to go. They, they, they immediately can start. So this is uh, the operation we want and this is kind what we mean by empowerment. And our products, we have good products. The team, even though comprising of different abilities, but we still can deliver good products. And uh, this is achievement of the team. And um, uh, we have very clear uh, uh, focus that uh, we focus to do delicious, additive-free products, like including cookies and bread. And standards and accreditation is another way to uh, keep us uh, benchmarking with uh, the industry and uh, also to let our customers uh, know what we can do and uh, have more confidence on our product and operation. This is an uh, IBQ style packaging. Uh, we use it as a way also to demonstrate their strengths. Uh, like on the packaging and also the new one, all of them actually are paintings. From, uh, some are from our colleagues and some are from uh, another team from Toma Group. They are also people with different abilities. So um, from the packaging to the products, it carries the same message. We did a lot of uh, this kind of inclusive education programs. This is a kind of side business, side business, because uh, I, I, I told you we have two core business, one is bakery and one is cafe. Uh, but recent years, this kind of activities is getting more popular. Uh, we, we, we didn't do a lot of promotion and marketing on, on this, this part. Uh, uh, usually, we do, we do this upon request, like uh, uh, an, an organization or a, a group of students uh, from school, uh, we want to do something for our students or we want to do something for our staff, can you arrange something for us? So starting from many, many uh, requests like this, we formulate some, we structure some activities that is easier. When people approach us, we'll sell them, uh, maybe package A, B, C, then um, and usually they can they can they can choose something from them, and 
yeah, it's getting more popular, and we got we keep on receiving a, a request uh, uh, to uh, for uh, inclusive cookie class and uh, table manner workshops are uh, also carried out in our cafe. And uh, you can see our colleagues, they will become the teaching assistant. They can uh, show the, the visitors what they know, uh, what they, they, they are, they, their expertise, and they are teacher during the, the activity. They can teach them. Um, and uh, yeah, starting also starting from this kind of inclusive programs, uh, sometimes you find it very difficult to to uh, to talk to a group of primary school students because um, if I show them the same PowerPoint like this one I show you, I don't think it, it makes sense. It yeah, I don't think they will find it very interesting. And uh, actually. Uh, it's very difficult, we think. So uh, we came up with this idea to, oh, how about we make it an interesting tool that we can use it to, to tell the story of inclusion. Uh, and, uh, and one of our artist friends, uh, she is very, uh, she knows I bakery very well, and uh, she volunteered to do this, all the creation and uh, on the drawing for us. And uh, this book, we kept using it as a tool, like in here, in uh, this kind of uh, reading clubs, we, we, we do a lot with the schools and uh, parent child uh, as a parent child activities. We use the, uh, this uh, illustration book as a tool to 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 share the, uh, our idea of uh, inclusion, the idea of uh, social inclusion, and also uh, it's kind of marketing tool because the two characters of the book are cookies. Actually, and yes, and they are uh, yeah, uh, best-selling cookies. And uh, we also treat ourselves as a uh, uh, corporate uh, business. That uh, we think we always bear in mind that uh, we also have our corporate responsibilities. Whenever we can contribute, uh, we are more than yeah, happy to do that. So in our cafe, we will let our art team to do their exhibition so that uh, they can have a good venue. Because our cafe on Tamar Park is a very, very good venue uh, with prime location, very convenient uh, transportation. So uh, the impact of their uh, exhibition there uh, is very well received. And we are trying our best to do greener and greener. We, we, uh, we cannot make sure we are a very green operator, but uh, it's the trend. And uh, also, we want to do as much as we, we, we can. So uh, like uh, Go Cup, so you bring your own cup, uh, no straw day. Yeah, we are now already doing uh, this. And we hope uh, the message is uh, can uh, build in in our menu to encourage more customers to join in. Um, these are community recognition after all these years from government and uh, all the awards we got. And I think the most happy thing the, is the most excited thing is not that uh, we I bakery got our uh, got uh, our awards. Uh, actually, when our employees themselves they achieve something is yeah, more rewarding for the whole team. You can see here when Zikin got the uh, uh, cafe like cafe life Guan Guan champion, or uh, Calvin when uh, he went to uh, France representing Hong Kong to got and uh, he got a, a silver medal. That uh, is very um, the whole team is very is very excited for their achievement. And this is about work from uh, Ging Lam, from Karen. She is working in our bakery. Uh, and this is from Vicky. So, uh, empowerment, this part is, um, maybe I'm not sure if I can make it very clear, but uh, other than just um, learning new skills, 
uh, learning their uh, uh, making uh, making uh, uh, money every month. I think uh, uh, the most important part is they can find a find a position in the community or in our place that they know they can contribute. This is the, the, the essence that we always emphasize. And uh, this is also the, the core part of our training that we must train our staff that they, they know something, they, they can manage to do something by themselves. Not only just uh, always uh, under supervision of uh, our Sifu, uh, but they can, okay, I can hand, we can hand something for them to take care and they can, you, you can be very relieved that they can finish. So uh, this is the empowerment we um, emphasize. And to tell our stories through our products like uh, uh, the student there mentioned, uh, it's very important product, it always com comes first. And uh, media is very supportive, got a lot. Um, Yes. So I uh, very briefly I uh, I have uh, yeah summarized what uh, I Bakery did by uh, ACE ability collaboration and empowerment and I'm not sure uh, yes and any questions or I'm not sure Dr Yento has any feedback on it. I won't say it's a model but. We'll do the usual TVB talk show. so much. Questions, you too. Any uh, questions so far? Interesting questions or surprising questions? Everyone is concentrated on the food. <laughs> okay, if, if no one asks, let me uh, ask a start of questions. Um, actually, I have, I have had this question for a long time. Uh, Dua is such a, I could say, one of the most successful NGOs in Hong Kong. Uh, what drove uh, Dua at that time to start thinking of creating a social enterprise? Because uh, it seems to me like as an NGO, Dua has been running, has been doing very well. So people ask, people outside of the NGO ask, why did you want to start a social enterprise model? Is it because uh, what you guys do in a shelter workshop, in an NGO, is it not delivering the results? Is it not uh, uh, delivering some outcomes as you expected and you thought that perhaps social enterprise as a form of social innovation could be a new solution to achieve better outcomes, better results? Maybe you can share with us. The, the first, we started uh, the first social enterprise uh, in 2002, actually is also originated from our rehab service. So under Donghua, Donghua is an NGO, I, I think most of you will know what we do. We have uh, the medical part, hospital part, and the second is the school, the education part, and the third core business is social, uh, social service. And under social service part, we have different kinds of service. But from what uh, my rehab complex, actually we are from rehab service. So we know um, 
the needs of people with disabilities. We know them well. And we know uh, how to train them and uh, how to help them to connect with the community. But as I, I told you in the slides, uh, only 4%, even though for the vocational rehab, rehab service part, that all of the members, they come, are supposed to, uh, to, to, to receive training and that they can, uh, one day they can get a job outside. But the fact is only 4% can do that. And this is also the target that the government sets for us to achieve. So, okay, we can for, 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 the, for the accountability part, yes, we, we, we have achieved the target. But um, we are still keep thinking, can we do more? For the, for the rest, 96%, like uh, 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 Vincent, Vicky, and Calvin, uh, if we do not have social enterprise like I Bakery or, or other social enterprises that don't want to do, um, do you think they can work? Or do you think they have chance to, 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 to really work in a workplace? Um, maybe not, I'm not sure. So this is the, 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 the drive and the, and the origin why we, we started our social enterprise. I'm not sure if everyone understood what is a shelter workshop. Does a shelter workshop, does a shelter workshop help the disabled uh, uh, find the jobs in the open market or prepare them for the jobs in the open market? Because I think if, if they do, if, if they do that, I mean, what is the purpose of setting up a social enterprise then? Um, shelter workshop is um, a is set up under a vocation, vocational rehab service. So in, in vocational rehab service, we have um, a kind of ladder. Basic is shelter workshop. So uh, you receive um, basic work training, work habit training, work motivation training there. And then some of them are okay, are, uh, got a lot of uh, progress, then uh, we may consider some of them for supported employment. That means um, some job coach will go out to work with them in the workplace and then uh, to support them in the workplace. Actually, they are not employee, but um, they started to get exposure to work in the workplace. And then if, oh good,